So the gulls that you see out here are, are a particular kind called California gulls and you find them all along the coast of California and Oregon and Washington and I guess that 85% of the California population of these gulls comes here to Mono Lake to nest. Hmm. Um, and there are some islands, you can see the top of a very dark black island out there, it's called Nedget. And they um, used to like to nest there. And they also have been to. When the lake level was at its lowest, there's mm -hmm. a land bridge between Nedget and the mainland. Oh, really? Yeah, and so coyotes could walk across and eat gold chicks or eggs. And it was like, it was really pretty devastating for the population. I've been to underneath all the mud or however they worked it out. And they blew it up, and all the mud went straight up in the air, and then straight back down. And so <laughs> that ended up not working very well. There was still a land bridge, and I guess they tried it multiple times, and still no success. But now it's back to being an island again, which is good. But the gulls built craters, and they're something like the youngest mountain range in North America. They're really young in geologic time. This is a really volcanically active area, and Panem Crater, which is just behind the hill, um, pretty much straight in front. It's a pretty neat place you can go and walk around inside of it, and there's lots of obsidian and everything. So is it a collapsed uh, volcanic dome, or is it actually a crater? Um, it's a crater. It's a, it's um, a volcano that erupted entirely underwater mm -hmm. when Mono Lake was enormous um, during the last ice age. Mm -hmm. And that's a pretty neat place to go to. Poha, which is this white island out here, um, that rose up out of the lake, I think, um, about 300 years ago, so really not that long ago. And it's not a volcano, but there was some sort of volcanic activity underneath and pushed a bunch of lake bed sediment up above um, the lake level. There's the island ocean. And they built a volcano out of chicken wire and who knows what else on one of the islands. And they called it Krakatoa. And they made it erupt for the sake of the film. And I guess um, when people are out there researching goals, that's where they go. <laughs> they, that's sort of the camp, is in this fake volcano. In the fake volcano? In the fake volcano, right in front of us. And there's oh, Mount there's a dead Warren. Fish here. Oh, look at that. Huh. Yeah, that's pretty much the belt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's cool. Cool. Um, making a lot of noise when they were getting fed. Huh. So. Stop paddling for a second, and I'm going to try to drift us up to some too fat. sage or something that was growing when it yeah. before the water level came up? Yeah. Or it might have been grease wood. Do you guys want to take a look at the shrimps up close? I have Is this stuff coming off your hand too? No. I didn't touch it. Stuff coming off your hand? Mm -hmm. um, no, it's disturbing the solution. Mm -hmm. See, so it's just right at the... When you pour it... There's the oh, yeah. look of oil and water mixing. Mm -hmm. I guess it's... Um, And underwater, along the Tika Towers, you see all these little black things. And those are the pupa of and go through two stages of their life cycle. The larva, which eats algae, and then the pupa. And the Native Americans of the area actually used to eat the pupa. They would collect it and dry it out and eat it or trade it. Native Americans from Yosemite or from the Central Valley. What's the blue, the blue bug? Um, um, oh, really? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. There's one of my holes. Good idea.
Do you come do this just for summers? I'm um, just this really busy little place. And then working in the office on different projects. Are you a college student? Yeah, I have one more year left at Pomona College in Southern California. Mm -hmm. Can you What's your major? Yeah. Environmental studies. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I guess that the orange is only high in the water, though. Oh, so really? Okay, yeah. I, I have no experience. So. <laughs> Every lump, I'm like, there's a lump. <laughs> I've been to the must be camp through here. Yeah, I can hear that. I'm here because it's just incredibly, you know, geologically active. And you'll see a lot of um, springs coming up through the falls, like in these lines. I'm guessing it doesn't does not freeze in the winter. Part of the skins really don't mix very well, and so if you have a layer of fresh water on top, I guess it will freeze. The, there's this normal cycle, I guess, of lake water mixing then there'll be layers that are created throughout like the spring runoff time. They're just these huge, huge, huge areas of... Uh, I wasn't sure what it was. What yeah. were smelling? I'm sure. I've been to in the ground where a bunch of shrimp are all gathered and that's where springs are coming up and those mm -hmm. are really sure. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of interesting that these two foot towers might even be um, sort of human caused. There are periodic earthquakes actually active area in general. We haven't felt an earthquake yet then. team of kayakers. Probably if it was a little deeper underwater and the water was still, um, it would be forming me too far. It may even still be forming me too far, I don't know. I've never seen so many shrimp. <laughs> yeah. And by the end of the summer, they're sort of running out of food and it's getting cold. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's sure all over. Yeah. No, not above, but I mean, they're not going to be cracking through Let's switch paddling, sorry. Tufa's here, and there's apparently Tufa's on the north shore a little bit, too. Yeah. I've been to the... Oh, you've been doing that, too. 